Hello, Anthony Fasano here from Pass the PE Exam. As a professional engineer, you would have worked long and hard to achieve your engineering license. After years of study and after passing both your FE and PE exams, you now have the career that you've been striving towards. But what happens after you've passed your PE exam? Once you can call yourself a professional engineer, it will be essential that you understand how to maintain your engineering license. In this video, we will cover everything that you need to know about the professional engineering license maintenance and renewal process. This video is brought to you by PPI, a leader in engineering exam prep for the FE and PE exams since 1975. PPI provides expert prep courses and study resources designed to help you pass the PE exam the first time. PPI's live online courses include hours of lectures, problem-solving demonstrations, exam strategy sessions, office hours, and a passing guarantee. When you take a live online course, PPI guarantees you will pass, or you can take the on-demand course for free. With study guides, practice exams, and more, the PPI Learning Hub offers digital practice and review that you can take with you anywhere you have a device so that you can prepare during the times most convenient for you. Check out PPI today at ppi2pass.com to see all the options available for PE exam prep. Let's dive in. Earning a PE license is just the beginning. Many state licensing boards require that PEs maintain and improve their skills through continuing education courses and other opportunities for professional development. If you are a licensed engineer anywhere in the United States, you must understand how your state handles continuing education as it's likely to impact your license renewal process. Proper renewals allow professionals to continue practicing engineering without interruption. And believe me, a lot of people do lose their license because of this. Now, before we get more into that, let's look at why you need continuing education. You must understand that you are entering a changing industry. Every year, there is a rapid change in technology globally. There will be new ways of working, and these changes occur from an engineer's perspective in a lot of ways, and it may impact the health and safety of the public, as well as the ethical considerations of your role. It is important to note that continuing education guidelines for the engineering license do differ state by state. To renew your license, you may be required to take continuing education courses online or attend engineering conferences in person. Regardless of how you obtain them, you will be required to complete a certain number of professional development hours, also known as PDHs, each renewal period. Every state has different requirements in terms of the number of PDHs that an engineer will be required to complete before they can renew their license. It is essential that you check and keep up to date with the requirements of your specific state. Now, the frequency at which you must renew your professional engineering license will also differ, of course, state by state. Many states will require that you renew your license every single year, while others require biennial or even triennial or every three years renewal. So how many professional development hours do you need? To find out, you will want to visit your state's education department website. For example, I am licensed in New York State and I need 36 PDHs every three years, which equates to one per month. While continuing education keeps professionals abreast of crucial topics and emerging issues, it also provides you an avenue to network with other engineering professionals. And you should always remember that your network is your net worth. Now, whether your state requires 15 PDHs annually, like Texas, or 36 PDHs for triennial renewal, like New York, it's important to understand what exactly your state requires for renewing your PE license. For instance, of the 18 PDHs that Florida requires for its biennial renewal, four of the PDHs must correlate to the engineer's specific area of practice. One PDH must relate to the state's laws and rules of professional engineers, and one PDH must relate to the state's professional ethics standards. Taking online courses and partaking in web seminars 
is a time effective option for continuing education because then you can easily kind of fit them into your working day schedule without the need for travel. The format that your personal development hours takes may vary. Some states don't specify that you need them to follow a particular subject. However, for best practices, you may want to complete a range that will include ethics, technical regulations, some that are specific to your personal field, and some that look at the general field of engineering. Lastly, remember that it is important for you to keep ahead of the game. You got to stay ahead in your education. Maintaining your engineering license is essential if you want to continue working within the field and especially signing off on documents. With the opportunity to develop your skills and get ahead of the game by learning about the newest developments in your sector, the knowledge provided through personal development and continuing education may be invaluable to you, even beyond renewing your engineering license. I hope you found this week's video helpful. In upcoming videos, we will solve some more PE exam practice problems and answer other questions from our subscribers. Pass the PE exam will publish videos weekly, so please be sure to click that subscribe button so you don't miss something that could make a substantial difference in your exam result. And please, I ask you to leave questions and comments below this video and I will respond to you. Let me know if there's a specific topic you'd like me to cover or a problem you need solved. Pass the PE exam will have you covered. I'll see you next week on Pass the PE exam.